Darren here, bestautodetailingtips.com. Let me just say one thing. Wow. Okay, I just got done shooting an introduction that ended up being like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Unbelievable. So, water spot removal. To cut to the chase, what do I do for superficial water spots? If you want to stay tuned to the rest of this video, I'm going to add a lot of information about DI water, soft water, distilled water. I'm really going to educate you. The more you become educated, the better you will be at detailing and the more you can charge because you know more and you can do better. So the simplified Reader's Digest version is I use Wheel Brightener by Meguiar's. I dilute this down because I use it as a wheel cleaner and a water spot removal. The packaging says four to one. I dilute it down five to one and I mix it in my five gallon container that's labeled wheel brightener that you might be able to see because I use so much of it. It's not safe for glass. I will explain that if you continue to stay tuned into this video. It is longer than I anticipated. So this is extremely effective. It's what I use uh, and I'm going to make this a two-parter because I'm going to demonstrate this product on a $200 plus thousand dollar Ferrari. Every week it has water spots on it, so tune into part two and you can actually see me do it. It's very simple, very effective. Um, the rest of this video is going to go into detail first as to the types of waters and so forth. So that's the ultra simple uh, steps is if you have water spots that cannot be removed uh, just by wiping them off or washing them off, use this product. It's safe for everything but glass, paint, chrome, uh, plastic, tail lights, tail lamps, vinyl trim, everything but glass, okay? That's the warning. Do not use on glass. But I will talk about that in the video if you continue to watch this. So you simply spray it on. My wheel cleaner, meaning it's already diluted down five to one. That's the dilution ratio I pick, even though the manufacturer says you can do it or you do it four to one. I do it five to one, so it's a little bit weaker. Why? Just because I can. Spray straight on the, the uh, panel of the car, uh, the hood, wherever it is. If you're working in direct sunlight, you don't want it to dry. It's not going to damage it. You'll just have to reactivate it by getting it wet again. You can uh, wash the car first and then do it. If it's not do too dirty, you can kind of accomplish both at the same time. Spray it on, let it dwell or sit there for a little bit. You can agitate it with your fingers, your hand if you want or with a microfiber cloth, you wipe it up, water spot gone. So if you stay tuned for the video, I'll talk about water spots that have actually eaten or ate into the body panel and that's a different story. Anyhow, tune in. Darren here, bestautodetailingtips.com. The lesson of the day is water spot removal. Any professional detailer or trying to break into the business detailer, you're gonna have to deal with it. Even on your own car, you're gonna have to deal with it. And what I tell my own customers is that uh, it is like the number one next to bird droppings, but see bird droppings are usually confined to a couple spots. Bird droppings and water spots are the worst enemies for your car as far as very specific things. Obviously dirt and sun are an enemy, road grime, that kind of stuff, that's a given. But bird drop, and, and, and what I mean by this is that bird droppings, you never know how bad it's going to be until the damage is done. Same with water spots. Water is not all created equal how the water is allowed to dry on the car is not all created equal. The material of your car, whether it's glass, plastic, chrome, or paint, is not all created equal. So like every area of detailing, it can get very complex and convoluted, which just means mixed up. Uh, and uh, 
Anyhow, very quickly, that all happened. So even though my tagline, Detailing Made Simple, if you go to my website, bestautodetailingtips.com, it's, uh, I think my tagline says, Detailing just became a whole lot simpler. Yes, simpler, but unfortunately, we're trained as society to oversimplify things. Unfortunately, we can oversimplify them to the point where now we are actually more dangerous. You know, it's kind of like having what I call, and I, and I talked to my wife about this, it's called the Reader's Digest mentality, where you're given just enough information to actually be dangerous or be counterproductive. My goal is to give you enough information that you can actually walk away with some useful tips and not be dangerous, but actually be productive or effective. So that's my goal. So I gotta lay some groundwork here for you when it comes to water spots. First, let's talk about water itself because every time I bring up a subject, it bleeds into all these other areas. And I try to think and, and put myself into your shoes and ask the questions in anticipation of what, let me back up. I try to answer the questions in anticipation of what you're going to ask. But with that said, I appreciate your comments and questions because you guys come up with questions that just would never enter my mind. And I'm just amazed. Every time I turn on my computer, it's like, wow, I would have never thought of asking that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for tuning in. And thank you for sharing and helping me out. Uh, because really, the more you help me, the more I can help you. So ultimately, it's like that uh, move, uh, line from that movie uh, with Tom Cruise. Uh, help me help you. Okay, so your comments are valid. There is no stupid question. I don't care how stupid you may feel. Ask it. You can do it privately. I don't understand everything about the internet. I know a lot about it. But there's ways, whether it's Google+, Plus or you can go to my uh, website. That's a good way if you want to lay on the down low and ask me a question, go to my website. There's a contact, uh, contact me page over in the left-hand column and you can secretly contact me and fly into the radar and not ask your silly or stupid question uh, for the, the, the world to see it. But like I said, there is no stupid question because it helps me help you. So water. DI water. I'm sure many of you have heard that term. It stands for deionized water. What does that actually mean? Well, everything has ions. They're, they're, they're charged either positively or negatively. You don't really need to know that. What All you need to know is why do you guys use deionized water? Well, the, the, the idea is DI water is the most pure water you can get aside and this is a little sidebar because what I keep on hand is what's called distilled water now I'm trying to re I'm trying to figure out how to relate this in other words distilled water how this is created which is the most pure water and that's why if you ever have, have purchased an iron like for clothes or certain uh, uh, coffee makers, whatever, they'll, they'll specify to use distilled water. Why? Because all the impurities have been removed from this. The, disti the distillation process, what happens is they allow the water to evaporate. It's the same thing that happens in the atmosphere or in, the, in life. Water evaporates from the ocean, from lakes, from after it rains, and all the impurities are left on the ground and it's pure water that is evaporated into the atmosphere and then it rains. As it rains though, it collects impurities from the air, but it's pure water to start with. So the distillation process is, is they allow the water to evaporate and leave all the impurities behind and then they collect that evaporated water so it's as pure as it can get. Well, that's what they try to replicate with deionized water, and they do it through various filters. So if you see these mobile guys running around town, and they've got the big trailer, and you'll see two big, uh, what looks like, uh, typically they're kind of yellow, and they're actually wrapped in like this um, fiberglass type of uh, whatever, 
material, or they'll be steel tanks. Uh, you can also get them at your house in the form of what's called uh, soft water. So there's all different levels of water. And guys in the de mobile detailing world, as well as shops, use deionized de water. That way they don't ever have to worry about water spots, which is the lesson of the day. Water spots, we will all have to deal with them, but they're not all created equal. So to keep it simple, I have never used professionally deionized water. You know why? Because I know that every car that I was going to wash or detail, I'm not going to allow the water to drip dry or dry in the sun and allow the possibility of water spots to happen. Because what creates a water spot is dirt or minerals specifically. There's with, within every water, whether it's tap water or rain water, whatever, will either mix with dirt or have dirt already part of it. Now as the hydrogen, I think the hydrogen molecules evaporate into the air, it leaves the minerals behind and that creates the ring, which is a water spot. Those minerals will actually eat into or etch into the material in which it is laying on. It can happen and become permanent on glass, chrome, plastic, and paint, especially paint. That's what most people are concerned about. So over the years, whether I've been on location, I've actually had guys, I've been in parking lots, this is a little sidebar, I've been in parking lots where literally, and this is when I was doing mobile detailing, uh, and I had a fully contained unit where I had my own water tank, pressure washer, and generator. Those days are gone because now I deal with a very affluent clientele, and I show up at their house and I just have simplified it. There's plenty of videos where I talk about that more in detail. But I've been in a parking lot and we're all are working on cars and there will literally be two or three other detailers in the same parking lot and we're all doing cars. Which is why I'm always so willing to help guys out. There's more than enough business. And a lot of business relationships are just that, relationships. You, you either connect uh, with your personality based on the customer and so the personality comes first ironically and then your quality work is kind of second but usually the quality work has to be proven and then you either mix uh, personality wise or you don't and you go separate ways or you remain customers and so forth anyhow so DI water you don't have to use it uh, if you pass the car lots, often you will notice that they will have a crew out there hosing down all the cars to keep them clean. Now they are using deionized water because they will not be able to keep up with the water drying in the sun and creating water spots. Because water spots can become permanent, it's not a good thing. So that's the whole lesson on deionized water. I don't overthink it. Yes, it's nice to work with because you don't have to worry about it. It never leaves water spots. If it does leave water spots, for the most part, you can just wipe them up with a wet rag and there's no permanent mark left. But with that said, is that once you use deionized water, it's still not 100% perfect because it's still mixing with the dirt. Yes, I realize you hose off the car and now it's just freshly clean and there's not much dirt for it to mix with to create a water spot, but it's still an element. But yes, by all means it is better and more user friendly, but the trade off for me is just not worth it because you've got to carry around all the tanks, you've got to carry around a pressure washer and a water tank, not necessarily a water tank, but you need a water source to feed through the, usually there's two tanks, that, uh, filter tanks that it's fed through, so based on the company that you sign on with and how fresh your tanks are will determine how pure that water is. Okay, so water spots. Uh, later in this video, I'm actually going to show you what I do or I'm, well, I'm going to tell you right now what I do, but I'm going to actually demonstrate on a Ferrari, one of my customers' accounts. I go into detail how ironic it is that this guy owns like almost a million dollars worth of cars and not a single one of them gets in the garage. So to cut to the chase, um, and by the way, 
in case you're wondering, because I know one of you asked, sorry I don't remember which one of you it was, you wanted to know exactly what was all in all my stuff. I don't have time to go through that right now, but I keep distilled water on hand because as I've said, it's the most pure water. So when you're mixing concentrates, for example, like my super degreaser or my all-purpose cleaner by McGuire's, and it's like soft water in your house. Most adults, when I say adults, let's say anyone that's owned a house, they're familiar with, with what's called hard water, which is straight water from your city's resources, or soft water, which has been softened down. I don't know why they call it soft. Um, which has been soft, softened down through the use of salt. I'm not sure exactly the chemical process of how that works, um, but there's trade-offs for it. Um, because with soft water, it actually, I looked this up, and of course I have so much uh, stuff on the hard drive, this hard drive, I can't remember everything. Anyhow, but the benefit of soft water is that you have to use less soap, less shampoo, because it is not having to overcompensate for the minerals and dirt in the water and it doesn't create those hard water deposits around your faucets, on the sink, around the bathtub, that kind of stuff. So that's the benefit. There actually is a trade-off and it has something to do with soaps clinging to, I don't remember, anyhow. So, Soft water, hard water, DI water. So the point is, is distilled water is very cheap. It's like a dollar something a gallon. So when I'm mixing my formulations, I use distilled water so that my dilution ratios are that much stronger or that much more effective. It's really a non-issue. It's me overthinking things and being hyper vigilant. But that's me. It's really, it's truly not a requirement. But once again, in trying to anticipate your questions, I'm trying to answer them. So, when it comes to water spots, they're not all created equal. So, based on the water itself, whether it was rainwater or uh, city water, sprinklers, whatever, uh, how they're allowed to dry in the direct sunlight, so many things will uh, determine if the water spot is permanent or not. So, when you first come up to a water spot, the first thing to do is you just wash the car however you have chosen to wash the car. If you're trying to test the water spot first, you simply wipe it with a wet chamois, a wet microfiber, and when I say wet, I just mean it's wet with water. Now, if the water spot remains, as in the circles of the little water spots, then you feel it. Chances are you're going to feel a little edge. That means the minerals have deposited that are dried onto the surface. Now the next step is that you realize that straight water is not going to dissolve those water spots. So how do you remove them? Well, I've heard, and I was going to test this, but once again, since I shoot on location, none of these videos are scripted. It's all on the fly. I try to do it a little advanced preparation and thinking what I'm going to uh, try to stay focused on, but sometimes I do better at it than others. The point is, is vinegar. I've heard that vinegar, because this is where chemistry comes in, and this is where the pH scale comes in, and if you've watched my other videos, you've heard me mock or bag on marketing and advertising where they will use the old pH scale thing or pH balance. It's not that I'm disregarding it, uh, and trying to disparage it completely. It is relevant, it's just that they, the manufacturers don't give you enough information so you know how it's relevant. So this is where vinegar, uh, water minerals, and the pH scale is relevant because everything is acid or alkal alkaline based. For example, like on battery acid, how do you neutralize it? Well, you can neutralize it with baking soda. For example, if you'll read, and I think I have, um, like here, this is my cleaning kit for my kids who are my housekeepers. <laughs> yes, I'm a 49-year-old man that still doesn't uh, have a paid housekeeper, okay? So I don't know if that means anything to you or not, but here in Southern California, 
that's kind of means something. But I've got five kids and I make them work because I want to teach them work ethic. So Lysol, you'll read on certain products like chlorine bleach. That's actually the product. Chlorine bleach, and I don't have anything right here. So for example, if you poured chlorine into the toilet to clean it somehow and then you took a leak, you peed into it, because the, uh, your urine has, I believe, ammonia in it, so you cannot mix ammonia with chlorine because it will create a poisonous gas. Okay, that would be a bad thing. It literally could kill you. So this is where chemistry, chemical engineering, it really is truly profoundly significant in the world if you understand the different chemicals that you're mixing and what will result when you mix those chemicals, which is also called a catalyst effect. You take one chemical, mix it with another, it catalyzes and creates a third element or third compound. If you're familiar with JB Weld, where you mix the two equal parts together, it catalyzes and creates this very hard compound. So anyhow, vinegar I've heard will dissolve water spots, but that's only superficial water spots because that's part of the steps where you need to assess. Okay, the water spot, it's there, not a good thing. I've got to detail this car, how do I get rid of it? Different, different, different materials, glass, chrome, paint, plastic, vinyl, will require different strategies. So, on glass, you could simply use a razor blade to scrape off the water spot mineral deposits. Okay, eventually, if they have been allowed to dry there in a manner that has allowed them to actually etch into the glass, they will become permanent. Now, there's kits out there to polish glass, but that's the deal with water spots. Now, this is where I need some visual aids, okay? So this is the surface. Hopefully this is going to show up. This is the surface, okay? And let's, since we're talking about different things, let's call this glass. Let's call this paint, which the first layer is clear coat. The second layer is uh, your base coat. And the third layer is the primer. And the fourth layer is the actual uh, body panel. Each layer of the paint is a certain thickness, what, hundreds of an inch thick. So if this was glass, glass is just one layer of glass and all glass is different thicknesses, that doesn't matter. So the point is, is you have a water drop that is created on the top and then it dries. And what's left over is a residual layer of minerals that are now on top of the paint or on top of the glass or whatever the material is. You can feel it with your finger. Okay, so how do we remove that? Because removing the top of it is pretty straightforward. But if that water was allowed to dry in such a manner that the minerals have now ate or eaten, uh, excuse my improper use of the English language if I am, but if it has been allowed to eat into the surface, it will actually eat below the top layer. So now you can remove the mineral buildup and it will be smooth. You can use a clay bar, you can use the wheel acid, which is what I demonstrate in the video, but if it has eight or eaten into the bottom layer, the only way to remove that, whether it's glass, chrome, or whatever, and some materials you just won't be able to remove completely because you can't polish it away. It's like woodworking. Let's say you have a piece of wood and it's got some scratches in it, and this is a what's called a side view or a cutaway view, um, where if you took, for example, this pad of paper, this is the flat surface, and it's got, let's say it's wood, it's got a bunch of scratches in it, okay? So if I was to take this and rotate it this way, cut it in half, 
That's called the cutaway or side view. So that's what this is, is those scratch would, would, scratches would look like little valleys where the scratch is, okay? And in this case, it's where the water spot is. It has created a ring on top of the surface. You've got all your little water spots. So if I was to now rotate this and see that the water spot ring, let's put it right here, that represents the ring has ate into the material below the surface. The only way to remove that 100% is to polish away enough of the surrounding material to the very bottom. My pen is holding it the wrong way so the ink is not flowing. Welcome to the world of gravity. There we go. Gravity actually feeds the ink down and which is why you can write that way. So unless you sand this or polish away the top material to the very bottom of that scratch, like if it was wood, if you're a woodworker, and this is why you graduate from 150 grit to let's say 200 grit to 350 grit, it's the same with wet sanding. You start out with 800 grit and then maybe go to 1200 grit, 1500 grit, and then 2,000, and then 3,000. So you're putting finer and finer scratches into it to the point where it's a completely uniformed scratched surface. And now you polish away through buffers and the right polishes your 3,000 grit because you have what's called a, a uniform scratch pattern. Well, the same principle applies to water spots. So you have to determine to determine as a car owner or as a detailer what you're dealing with. So how do you remove the superficial layer? That's what I'm dealing with because most of the time the water spots will be superficial which means you can remove them but how do you break down those minerals? If it's glass, yes you can break out a razor blade and scrape it uh, and as a rule, just so you know, steel wool and razor blades are safe for glass. It doesn't make sense how steel wool can be used, and I'm talking ultra fine. Steel wool is rated in categories. That's part of what I keep here is it's yeah, double zero, which is called fine, and then there's ultra fine, which is called double or triple zero. It'll have a number sign or a pound sign, zero, zero, or zero, zero, zero. That's what I use on glass if I ever need to. Detailing clay because it removes the uh, impurities off of hard surfaces, you can use that. But if you want to cut to the chase, wheel brightener is what I use. And I use the same dilution ratio. Now this officially on the packaging says you can dilute it four to one, which means for every one part of this, whether it's a gallon, a cup, 8 ounces, 12 ounces, doesn't matter, it's just equal parts. So whatever part or volume that you've chosen to mix, you just add the same amount of water times 4. So 4 to 1, 1 part this, 4 parts water. I professionally and personally mix this 5 to 1. And I mix it in my 5 gallon container like this because I go through so much of it. So that's just what I do because it's still strong enough. I'm not using a pressure washer. I'm having to manually agitate it anyways. So it's the same dilution ratio that I use for my wheels. I use it directly on the paint. The video will show that. I'm doing it on a Ferrari. Do not use it on glass. The acid in this chemical now it's just the base acid, it doesn't mean it's all acid. And by the way, notice how it's in a plastic container. Okay, so people get these uh, uh, visions of whore when they think of acid. Oh my gosh, it's going to eat right through my skin or whatever. Well, guess what? This is where chemistry comes in, the pH scale, all those things are relevant. Because this acid does not react to plastics or paint. And clear coat is a form of plastic believe it or not. So 
watch the video. That's the simplest way that I use professionally to, to remove water spots that I cannot simply just wash away or wipe away. Do not use it on glass though because like I said this or have yet to say the acid base in this is actually a glass etching acid. That can mean whatever you want it to mean. It doesn't matter. Don't use it on glass. Officially I've sprayed this onto a damp rag and when I mean damp I mean a rag that's been dampened with water only and I've rubbed it on the glass and I have not had any problem but I have misted it onto a glass and it did indeed etch the glass. I did a little test demonstration. I don't know the difference. I don't know if it's because I didn't allow it to remain on the glass when I was just wiping it but you can use that at your own peril or your own caution. Paint everything else completely safe. You'll see in the video. Um, I think that's it. Oh, also this is part, if you go to my website, and I'm going to show you in a moment, because I'm going to have you look over my shoulder. Um, when using my website, if you want to help support me, like I said, I do make money on my channels and my website. So you know exactly part of my agenda. Yes, I enjoy this, but it takes a lot of time and effort. It doesn't seem like it does. Because you're like, well, geez, Darren, you know the stuff. You don't even script it. You don't use a teleprompter or whatever. Trust me, it takes a lot of time to edit and download. So if you want to help me out, thank you very much. The way you do that is go to my website first. Auto Geek, it's not the only place to get these products. A lot of people ask about chemical guys. I'm sure they make great products. I don't have time to test them all out. I'm just helping you cut to the chase because these are the products that I actually use professionally, have tested them out for years, and it's just the products that I've chosen for whatever reason. They're available, they're relatively inexpensive compared to the competition, and they work. How about that? They just work. So yes, does Meguiar's is anti-climatic compared to Chemical Guys? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe Chemical Guys products sound more special to you. So go for it. I know they make quality products. No, no company lasts in today's competitive market if they're not doing something right. It's just that are they doing things more right than their competitors? Meguiar's, everyone's familiar with it. They're easy to get. If you want to help me out, Okay, this is how it works. Uh, like I said, in the name of transparency, yes, I do make money off of this. It incentivizes me. So, as long as you access AutoGeek through one of my websites, on every page, there will either be a link of some kind, or over in the right-hand column, there'll be just a banner advertising AutoGeek. That, whenever you make a purchase through that, because that will open into a new window, and I'll show you that at the end of this video. So, uh, there's, this is going to be a two-parter, uh, the end of the second part, where I actually demonstrate it on a Ferrari. I'll show you uh, how to actually, I'll, I'll have you look over my shoulder, and you can see exactly what I mean. So you go to my website, click on a link, a new window opens, it'll take you to AutoGeek. You can do a full search on AutoGeek. They got their own little search box. That helps me out, helps me uh, supplement my income so I can create more videos to help you get what you want. So I think enough said.